Hi, I'm Chris Califf. I'm the CTO of Brocast Games and I'm the lead developer of Ecstasy Motion. We initially wrote this to bring DVH animations into the engine and retarget them to different characters and edit them, but it quickly became obvious that there were many more things we could do here, especially when we brought the physics on board. We went to Seagraph this year to demonstrate the technology behind our character animation app. What we're doing here is taking a motion capture feed and streaming it into a 3D game environment with live physics and game AI. The actor in the suit controls the avatar and can interact with the game environment as well as other virtual actors. The zombies are animated characters that are using a state engine to do basic game AI like um, coming in and playing animations to attack him and then crawling away if they get knocked down. The actual uh, interface between them is a system that involves using the physics collision of the mocap actor with the rigid bodies in the zombie actors, and they play a, a static animation until such a time as they actually collide with a body part. When they do that, then the body part that actually collides with the actor gets broken out of its animation and it goes into a physics mode that uses motor targets to try to keep doing the animation. It continues to do the basic moves of the animation, except where it's obstructed. If you stop touching it, then it will go straight back into the animation and play like normal. The other part of that system is the fact that when you interact with a body part, if you move it far enough away from where it's trying to be with its animation, then it will actually break off parts up the chain. So if you hit the forearm and then you really move the forearm away from where it's trying to go in its animation, then the upper arm will also break off um, up to the shoulder and the chest, and every time you break off another higher node, if it has anything downstream from it, like when you get to the chest, then it will also rig all the head and the other arm. And then if you go far enough with it, you can knock the guy over because it will go all the way down to his hip and then he'll go to full ragdoll. If you want to use just one real actor in a fight scene, then you would populate the rest of the scene with these virtual actors and then your guy in the mocap suit would be running around, you know, punching them or hitting them or doing whatever he's doing. As you do this, you can record the entire sequence so that everybody in the scene is recording a BVH of what they're doing and then you can play back this whole scene in another program by importing those BVHs and starting them all at the same time. So it makes it a lot easier to, to do a lot of work that would otherwise be hand work in an animation program. It doesn't have to be a fight necessarily. We have this logic where the zombies just chase the actor and it just demonstrates that you can do other things besides just knocking them down. We're still working on the base software, so we haven't released a lot of completed games yet. But here's a soccer game we made for one of our international clients, using an OptiTrack system to allow the player to kick a ball into a goal. We're expecting to have Ecstasy Motion completed by the end of this year. When we're done, you'll be able to use it to help you make animations for your game or your movie project. Or you'll be able to buy the SDK and link the Ecstasy Physics and Motion Capture functions right into your game project. Thanks for your time and we hope you enjoyed this video.